So here we are. We're at Weddings by Hannah. And beautiful photos. Photos are gorgeous. Um, love how the website's set up. Good font, good text. Um, one thing I'll say right off the bat that I have not actually mentioned in other sessions that we've done is that the aesthetic of your website does matter. Okay, so like, believe it or not, you know, if people um, if people don't like the way your website looks, they're less likely to stay on it. Okay, so if you can keep people on your website for longer and keep them from like leaving your website, then that's actually better than if they were to just come to your website and spend less time on your website, right? So I do want to talk a little bit more than I have in the past just about the aesthetic. You know, there's lots of things that I get into um, with, like, students that are doing my, my easy SEO framework. Um, you know, we get into a lot of the how-to and specifics about what we change, but I at least want to mention some of the framework here in terms of, okay, what do I mean by keeping people on your website and how does that even work? Well, having like a aesthetically pleasing website does help. If your photos look good, that does help, okay? Um, but one of the things I see a lot of photographers miss is what I call framing, okay? Now, we probably all know what a call to action is, right? So a call to action or CTA, as you might hear it called, is where we are calling people to do something, right? When we have call to actions, we direct people in a specific path, Right, so with my students um, in Easy SEO, I teach them about okay, what you want to do is you want to be able to um, you want to create sort of like a lazy river so that your ideal clients have a specific way that they are going to flow through your website, and we do that through framing, right? So framing is one of those things that um, we don't want we, we don't ever want a frame to not direct the person. Okay, so in this instance, like with Weddings by Hannah, like right now, this is beautiful. I'm not saying you have to change this, but ideally, there would be something here that directs them to the next step. Now, you could argue, okay, well, they're just going to do it automatically. I, why should I have to tell them that? The reason is that if someone feels guided, they are, are going to feel more comfortable. Okay, so for instance, like a lot of the websites will have like a little like, you know, arrow thing with like scroll down I actually think that's fantastic because again the more comfortable they feel the more likely they are to continue clicking around you know so like having something simple like that just to kind of direct them to the next step is really valuable right and so this is great you know looking for a photographer who can capture the perfect combination I'll get details came in moments you know you're speaking to your ideal client um, I usually like to have an introduction so, you know, if it were me, I, I would definitely have, an, like, a photo of you here because you've already got pretty photos here. So, like, it's kind of redundant, right? Um, they're gorgeous photos. I wouldn't take this off, but I'm just saying I don't think I would have those photos there because, again, what we're wanting to do is create this flow, and the goal is to make them feel welcome, okay? And, like, they uh, they are very directed. So, again, the method to do doing that is what we call framing, and it involves always directing them through sort of the next call to action. Even if that's as simple as like we talked about up top here, just an arrow that says scroll down or something like that. And, and, and there are, you know, websites that have templates that are like just great for this sort of thing. Um, you know, say like scroll down and, and it looks aesthetically pleasing. So um, that's just a little bit into that. That we're not, that's, that's not even hardly getting into it, but you know, I do want to give you that, that upfront sort of like, you know, Hey, the aesthetic and the flow of your website really does matter. Um, so moving on from there, and, and let me know if that makes sense, Hannah. Um, also, let me know what you're on. Are you are you show it? Are you Squarespace? What are you using, Hannah? Let me know. Um, we're going to take a look a little bit more into your website, and just kind of uh, oh, not where I want to go. We want to look a little bit at uh, like your stats. Okay, so the reason I look at stats is because I like to know how um how good your website is so far and like if there's some things that should be concerning like spam score right and other things that we might want to consider so bear with me just a second as i log in here all right there we go okay so 
this is going to be your website. And the first thing I usually look at is page authority, just because I kind of want to have an idea of like, okay, where is your we uh, website ranking in terms of the page authority? Page authority is going to be a slide. It's on a sliding scale of zero to 100. The higher it is, the better. Okay. Actually, I take that back. Domain authority is typically what I work at for, look at first. They've switched this around. That's why it's confusing me. It used to be domain authority was here. They've switched page and domain authority. Domain authority is a zero to 100 thing. Kind of is a, a number that represents how much Google can trust you. Again, that goes from zero to 100. Most people, like most photographers, I usually see somewhere between like 10 and 24 in terms of domain authority. Now, I've seen people as low as like a seven rank on the first page of Google. And you might be able to, as long as you're doing the right stuff, you might be able to even be lower in rank on the first page of Google. So, you know, again, the, uh, the domain authority is going to be how much trust Google has in your website, like how much authority your website as a whole has with Google. Okay. And then the next thing, page authority, is how much that specific page has to rank for any given keyword. So they're, it's it's strange because they're very, very intimately related. And I, I don't want you to pay a lot of attention to this. The only reason I talk about it is because people usually ask about it, okay? So don't worry about those things too much. It's not super important. I just like to know, okay, are you above a seven? Because I know I've seen sevens rank on the first page of Google. You're a 10, so that's great. Um, so let's go back. We're Next thing we're gonna look at real quick is spam score. You know, because that kind of tells us, like, has have you had anything weird go on with your site? Um, you know, a lot of times, like, people that have had someone do SEO for them, you will see that's sort of like a high spam score just because a lot of the SEO companies out there, they get, they, they're getting really low-quality links, right? So links can help you. Specific links can really help you. Some links don't really help you at all. Other links uh, can actually hurt you. You know, so like some of these links where the, there's like a high spam score, you know, these are like not necessarily good websites. So like these are these random websites. Like you don't really need to worry about it because you don't have a lot. But sometimes I've seen people with a super high spam score and I do get concerned about those. So let's go back to overview. And we're going to keep speeding along, okay, um, because I do want to get to other people's websites. Um, you've got 30 websites that have been found that are linking to you. That's good. Generally speaking, the more websites that are linking to you, the better. Um, that's, again, not always true. There's a lot of things that you really want to look for to make the most of your efforts when it comes to having websites that link to you. And there's that's a whole, there's a whole lot to that. It's really easy once you know the specifics, right? But generally speaking, and, and we could go into the specifics, but it's, it's just going to take too long right now. So um, the specifics uh, being okay, well, like what websites should I try to get on? How should I do that? What types of links am I looking for? What types of websites make the most sense? All that kind of stuff. But just know, generally speaking, that we the more websites that are linking to you, that's a good thing, usually, as long as they're not spammy. And then there's 123 inbound links, which are the links that are coming from those websites. But what's kind of odd here is that you have zero ranking keywords, at least in terms of what's being found by this tool, right? So... There's literally no keywords that you're ranking for currently, which is, I'm not laughing at you, so don't hear me that I'm laughing at you. I'm saying, like, that is, uh, it makes me think that you've done nothing, which means that you have a higher chance of actually making a lot of progress from where you're at. Okay, so so the, the uh, it's good. It's good is what I'm saying, is that don't be worried about the zero ranking keywords because sometimes I see people that have like 500 ranking keywords and they're horrible, worthless, useless keywords, okay? Which means, you know, you could rank for a keyword, but it never equal cash. You want your keywords to equal cash or they're worthless, at least in my my estimation. I don't, I don't want to put out effort without getting a return on my investment, okay? So uh, let's go back to your website one more time and then we're going to wrap this up and move on to the next person. Uh, you know, other things I look for is I, you know, I kind of look at like, okay, what's the text that you've got on your website? And, um, you know, like I, generally speaking, you want text anywhere and everywhere that you can put it. You don't want to sound robotic. You don't want to be too general with your text. You want to be specific and you want to be able to communicate with your ideal client. Okay. Um, 
places you can do that. It's like your site title. You know, yours is just home. So that's very non-distinct. Um, your headings, you know, on the VIP list, right? Like that's not very descriptive. Um, and that's why you're not really ranking for any keywords because you're not clearly communicating to Google who you are, what you do, what your website's about. Um, and again, I'm kind of just getting into the, the we're just we're, we're looking at the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. And the rest of the iceberg is not difficult. It's just that um, there's a lot of time you can waste on things that don't matter, and the stuff that doesn't matter is actually not that difficult. Okay, So again, we're talking generalities here, but having text on your website that's clear and communicates to your ideal client in the ways that Google is actually looking for it to be communicated is very important. What we're looking at now is this is uh, the keywords that are being found on your homepage. And I like to point out a couple things here. Prominence, right? So prominence is how much those specific keywords are actually sticking out to, to, uh, to the search engine. So like right now your highest prominent keyword and this is this is three word phrases, right? So these these are key words, even though it's a single phrase. Okay, I've gotten that question before. Like, okay, well, does is a keyword just a single word or is it a phrase? The answer is yes. <laughs> okay, like it can be a phrase, uh, or it could be a single keyword. But generally, I don't waste too much effort on the one and two word keyword phrases. Um, usually, if you have a three word or four word phrase, then it takes care of your one and two word phrases as well. So um, like here, your highest prominent phrase is who can capture. So again, how specific is that? You know, like it's, it's not real specific in terms of how that would communicate to, uh, to someone. And hold on one second. I'm just going to make sure that everything's still running here. Looks like it is. I believe everybody let me know. And the. <laughs> I just don't want to be doing this. And then I realize like I'm not actually talking to anyone. So <laughs> comment and let me know if everybody can still hear me <laughs> and is still getting this. If not, <laughs> then I guess you won't comment and let me know. But I just want to make sure. So let's see. I'm going to go back and make sure we're getting everything here. Facebook Live is one of those things that you think it would be much easier than it is, but at least from my experience, it is not. Okay, looks like we're still going here. Again, everybody comment. Let me know that you're still getting everything. Um, I believe we're good. So, yeah, cool. Okay, looks like it's still working. Um, okay, let's go back to where we were. Yeah, so your, your highest prominent keywords right now, your keyword phrases are just, they're sort of nonsensical. Again, the forward phrase has, is the same issue, right? Like your highest prominent one is this 85% prominence, and it's who can capture the, right? So unless someone's searching for who can capture the, then you're not going to benefit too much, okay? So that's why it's really, really important to have solid copy on your website. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next person. We're going to go to my list, and we're going to figure out who's next on the list. So again, bear with me just a second. I do have all this open and up, but it's like takes a second to get to. Okay, so I'm going to read out a few more names. And if you're here, again, let me know. Okay, I've got uh, Alex. Alex, uh, let me make it a little bit larger on my screen so I can actually see it. I think it's Alex Washauer, maybe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Washauer. If that's not correct, you can correct me. Um, if you're here, let me know. We've also got Jennifer Sullivan, who I believe is here. So, Jennifer, if you're still with us, go ahead and comment. I'd love to uh, love to get you in on here. So, who else do we got? We've got Otto and Christina. I think Christina's here. So, Christina, if you're here, go ahead and comment. Let me know that you're still here. And Oh, Alex is here. So, Alex, you are next, my friend. So, let's get your website up and rolling Bear with me just a second as I get everything all prepared for us. And uh, Alex is, you know, I've explained a lot in that last one, so I'm not going to keep explaining everything every time because that would be redundant, <laughs> right? So 
I, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to breeze through a lot of things at this point and just kind of apply it to each person's website. Okay. Christina and Jennifer, I see you there. You stick around. I'm going to get to you, to, to you, uh, to you all as well. Okay. So just stick around and, uh, you'll be next after Alex. Okay. So let's switch back to our, uh, our screen here. Alex, beautiful photo. Let me know what you shot this with. That's a beautiful photo. Look at that. Look at the bokeh. It's so pretty. Um, so I don't know how your image loads on, um, on like a different screen than my laptop. I guess if I make it smaller, it might look a little bit better. I'd almost wonder if you could get that to fit, even if you cropped it differently and could get it to fit a little bit better on the screen, because I just know, like, the way it looks to me, it's like, ah, I kind of wish that fit a little bit better. The other thing is, like, again, your your website just, at the get-go, it's sort of non-distinct. You know, is this a wedding planner? Is this a florist? Is this, you know, a photographer? Who, what, when, where? I, I don't really know anything, okay? And so being able to have something distinct is very, very important. And then also the same thing about frames, creating framing, right, to where it kind of, kind of guides the viewer along. Um, that's something else that, you know, I think is important and I have found to be important. Photos are absolutely stunning, though. Gorgeous for, uh, gorgeous photos. Your website aesthetically looks great. Um, you know, luxury wedding photographer, if that resonates with your branding and your clients like that, then use it. If not, um, you know, from an SEO standpoint, I just don't think many people that – I don't think there's many people actually Google searching luxury wedding photographer. Okay. So again, the content on our websites where the keywords are going to come from, right? The copy, the copy's not really that, um, like highly searched or it, for whatever reason does not actually equal cash. Then as far as I'm concerned, it is a useless keyword. Okay. Now, if again, if you just really think it helps your sales in terms of like your, um, you know, resonating with your ideal clients, go for it. Um, I think your images are going to do that mostly, you know. So I don't, I don't think you need to worry about it from like a branding standpoint. Um, but again, from an SEO standpoint, I just I, you can let me know if someone's like booked, like found you by Google searching luxury wedding photographer, then let me know. Um, and how, how many of us actually track that sort of stuff? Like, are you tracking how people found you? Because I will say that is, if you're not doing that, you should, from a business perspective, you should be doing that. You should be able to say, you know, this specific thing brought me in this many inquiries and this many conversions to actual bookings. Again, this thing brought me this money. So therefore I know I should invest in this, you know, or not invest in this, you know, like if you're, if you're like, let's say you're really pursuing a planner, but like they never send you any referrals, well then you got to re reevaluate and then be like, Oh, I need to like rethink how I approach that. Cause all my effort is getting me no return on my investment. Same thing with SEO. Like if you're using a keyword, then it should be giving you a return on investment or it's just worthless. Now keyword research is the answer to that really up front. Like you should be doing keyword research. So that way, like, you you have a really, really good idea that your keyword is going to matter, okay? that So keyword research is, is the way that you solve that problem the best you can up front. All right, let's go back to Alex's website. Um, you know, again, I, I don't see a lot that would guide someone to actually, you know, eventually reach out other than they just love your photos, you know, but like I'm a really strong believer, especially as more and more people are doing workshops and their portfolios are being really built up. It, it, you really don't want to compete on your photos. Like if you're just competing on your photos, like it, that's a really tough game to play, guys. Like that's a very tough game to play. I know we say we're going to jump back into it, but I, I do want to talk about this. Um, just competing, like if you're competing on how beautiful your photos are, Again, there's so much that is um, there that is hard to compete on, okay? Especially as people are getting more and more beautiful portfolios, more and more people are doing workshops. It, it just gets really tough. So I recommend, yes, you want to have beautiful photos. Like if you're an artist, 
Like, yes, have and post the most beautiful photos. But if you want to have conversions, then you really should not just be competing on your, your photos being beautiful. Um, you should be creating a user experience that um, nurtures someone, specifically your ideal client, so that they feel most connected with. It's all about connection, right? So, you know, someone connects with your photos. That's kind of, you know, for a wedding photographer, that's kind of a big deal. But I'll tell you, from an SEO standpoint, you can connect with people even before connecting with their photos. Okay, so like, for instance, like, you know, just a second, Alex, we're going to break away from looking at your page. And uh, I just want to show you this. So, you know, if we Google search, let's Google search luxury wedding photographer real quick. Just, just for the heck of it. If I can type. So, you know, we Google search luxury wedding photographer. When we come through, you'll notice the first thing that we see is not someone's photos. Right? What do we see? We see copy. So that's, believe it or not, the first way that you can connect with someone on Google, generally speaking, is going to be via copy. Now, you might say, oh, they might find you here. And in that case, it's going to be reviews-based really. Um, but if, and I still, I'm a strong believer that a lot of people do go to the organic search results. Okay. They're not just going up to the business results, although the business stuff is important, right? Like if you don't have a business listing yet, comment and say, I don't have, like, just say, I don't have a business listing because that might be something we talk about a little bit more in the future, but let me know in the comments if you do or do not have a business listing. Um, so, you know, again, the first thing that people are seeing, generally speaking, is going to be copy. So this is why, like, having someone else do your SEO is actually really tough unless they're also a copy, uh, like a copywriter, okay? And even still, like, a copywriter usually is going to really need a lot of input from you, okay? So, and, and again, the problem is if, if they're good at copy – are they good at SEO, <laughs> right? Because like you, it, it's a lot of skill to be good at copy and it's a lot of skill to be good at SEO, okay? Or not even skill. I don't think it's skill to be good at SEO. I think it's more so just like having tried all sorts of stuff than knowing what actually works because it's not hard, right? It's just, it's like uh, if, you, if you had to find a pearl in the ocean, it's not that uh, finding, it's not that getting a pearl from an oyster is difficult. It's just finding the right oysters. <laughs> you know, so I say the same thing with four-leaf clovers. I don't know if anybody knows this, but my superpower is being able to find four-leaf clovers. You can ask people that know me. Like, I can spot a four-leaf clover from, like, 10, 15 feet away in, like, a really weird supernatural way. Useless, right? Um, but what I found is generally when you find one four-leaf clover, you can find a bunch of four-leaf clovers. And I feel like SEO is very much the same. When you know the things that work, it's not that they're difficult. It's just that, like, you have to find the things that work and then sort of put all the pieces together. That's why a lot of, like, my students, you know, that I, that are doing the Easy SEO Framework, you see them in my, uh, you see them, like, post, and you see me posting their results, and it's like, They'll tell you, like, it's, it is not hard. It's easy stuff. It's just knowing the right easy stuff. So um, anyhow, going back to copy, it's difficult to find someone that's good at both copy and SEO. That's where learning SEO can be really, really good. Because if at least you know the SEO, even if you do hire a copy person, then, like, you know how to maybe make tweaks or something like that. Or maybe even learn copy. There's a really good book on copy um, called, if no, oh, it's like the standard. I'm going to have to get it. If anybody remembers what this book is called, you should get it. I, I for the life of me, cannot remember it right now. But anyhow, so moving on, we're going to go back to your site, Alex. I just want to make that point about how important it is to be able to use copy like a pro, okay? Because it does matter. And it is, when it comes to the normal Google search, okay, it is the first way that you're going to be able to connect with your ideal and or potential clients. Does that make sense? So I know Will Stevenson said that he does not think he has a Google business listing. You should get one. 
Google business listings are a good way to attract people to your site, believe it or not. Um, it is useful to do. And the thing is, it goes hand in hand with your, uh, your search rankings. So a lot more I could say on that, but just know it is good to have a Google business listing and to have it filled out. So going back to your website, I know I said it wasn't going to take so long on each person. And here I am, uh, you know, again, with framing, it's like, I just don't think I feel very directed and guided when I go to your website. Okay. And in this, this all matters for SEO because people, if they feel guided and directed, they are more likely to connect with you and then connect on an emotional um, level with you as an artist. Okay. So um, now you, you might be thinking like, well, Jeff, it, this actually, I've done all this research in the way my web, website's set up is um, <laughs> is like re it really connects with my ideal client. If it does and you feel like this is perfect, then don't change a thing. But if you're not ranking, that is usually a good indication that people are not enjoying your website as much as they could be. Okay, The more someone enjoys your website, the better chances you have to rank. Okay, so you, this is why you cannot separate SEO from branding. Because if your branding is really bad, <laughs> not, that's your, Alex, your branding is not bad. I actually love your website. Okay, so, but I'm saying this is not just for you, this is for anybody. If your branding is, let me not use the word bad, let me use the word not converting. Okay, if your branding and the way that your your website is laid out is not converting from a, like just a client standpoint, it's going to not rank as well from an SEO standpoint and vice versa. If you're not making conversions via SEO, it probably has a, a very strong connection to how well you're actually uh, connecting with your ideal clients. Okay. Those, that, that's why you cannot separate branding, SEO, website design, all this other stuff. You just can't, you can't separate it. So let's keep moving on. We're going to look at uh, your stuff in Moz real quick, just to see how you're kind of, Kind of doing from a raking standpoint. All right. Got a domain authority of 17, which is pretty good. That's uh, not bad. Got a good number of those linking domains, inbound links. Let's take a look at your spam score, and then we'll look at your keywords. And we're going to keep moving along pretty quickly here. Will says he's working on it now. Cool. So you got a spam score of 1%. That is not bad. I don't worry about it. Um, you know, just don't ever hire someone to get you links that's going to get you a bunch of spammy links. That's the only thing I can say. Um, I don't think that you've done that. Sometimes what happens is these websites will get, uh, they'll, sometimes these websites will actually steal your photos essentially. And then like try to use them as wallpaper or something else. So it's kind of funny because in this section you can find, like you have all these HD wallpapers, like maybe you set this up. But it could be that this is actually people that are stealing your photos and they're just these spammy sites. I have found that on, like with my photos, I've, I've seen people doing that. So just a heads up. Um, it's kind of tough to really track all those people down. Um, believe it or not, there are, there are, I can't, again, I wish I could remember all these names of these websites, but there's a website that will actually, if they think they can get you money, um, like if they have a case for someone stealing your photos, they'll take the case up. And I've heard of people using it and getting really, really good results. If I can remember what it is, then I'll have to like share it in the comments or something. But okay, going back to uh, to an overview of your site, we're going to look at your keywords. So ranking keywords, you got seventy six. Let's see if they make any sense. Yeah, and, and while this is loading, Alex asks, uh, "How can that be stopped?" We try to get them pulled down, but new ones appear. Um, one thing that I do recommend is if you can get like a uh, if you can have like a right click warning or like you have something installed that allows that does not allow people to right click then that makes it much more difficult for them to get like a, a good version of your photo. Um, you know depending on how large your photos are also like they might be deterred a little bit if you if you are having photos that aren't real large. Which you know, if you're if you're working on your SEO, your photos should not be very big anyhow. You know, so those are some tips on that. Um, 
it's tough though because you know you, you can't really keep people from being morally depraved, right? So <laughs> that's what makes this tough is because there's going to be people that steal stuff. You know, like if we had the, all the answers, there'd be no criminals, <laughs> right? Who would love a world with no criminals? Be great. Um, but the problem is that we live in this world where people are criminals. So y there are some things you can do. Like I said, if you have like a right click blocker and or, you know, you're making sure that you're not putting your photos too large because I think those things just really invite more pirates, essentially. Um, but, you know, let's see. Let's scroll down now. Go back to... Um, we're going to go back to your keywords here. So, Camille, real house, housewife, destination Hawaii. Was this like a, did you shoot like a real housewife person? Um, you're number three for that. That's cool. Tiato wedding photos. Number six. Not a whole lot of monthly volume, I would assume. You know, the no data, usually I take that as meaning that you don't got a lot of, uh, uh, traffic for these keywords, so they're probably not bringing much traffic to your site. Um, and I, you know, I, when I look at this, I like to see, okay, do you have anything that is bringing or potentially bringing a lot? Because those become opportunities, right? So, like Ethereal Gardens, you know, there's there's a lot more traffic for that per month. Now, you're not that's second page stuff right there, right? So, and this is probably a venue. Um, now, the venue itself probably has a lot lower traffic, so that's where these things get tricky. So, again, that may not be the best keyword, particularly. Um, and this is, again, where, like, keyword research comes in and you find out, even if you're not ranking for good keywords, you want to find good keywords to rank for. But I still do like to look at this stuff just to kind of have an idea of, like, okay, is there anything you're ranking for already that you can take advantage of? And, um, you know, some of the venue stuff might be all right. But, you know, the thing is, it's good to look at this and be like, okay, is my copy actually leading me to rank for stuff? Because if you're not ranking for anything or like everything is just horrible in terms of like being nonsensical, which I see sometimes, then it's like uh, kind of it's just it just becomes useless is what, what happens in terms of like, OK, we need to reanalyze copywriting, approach it now with a fresh aspect, maybe read a book on copywriting, something like that. And then getting the SEO knowledge so that now you can you can invest that into your website. You know, so when I think of like, um, you know, when I think of like a really healthy website, I think in terms of like, okay, number one, it does it does my website look aesthetically pleasing? Okay, and I'm not saying number one in importance. I'm just saying like this, this is a list. Okay, so number one, does my website look aesthetically pleasing? Number two, does it guide and direct the people that are on my, coming to my website? Number three, does my copy really resonate with my ideal client. Number four, is it SEO optimized copy, right? And if you have all those things in a line in the way that Google wants to see them, okay, then you're much more likely to rank. So that's where, um, you know, if we're not ranking, then we're going to, you know, it's more than likely tied to a number of those things. And that's how I like to look at SEO. It's very holistic perspective. I don't know of anybody else that's looking at it from that standpoint. Um, they, they might be out there, but I just, I think this is like a new opportunity. This is a new way to look at SEO, right? It's, it's, we're getting, like, we have to move away from looking at SEO as just like keywords and, you know, getting links or whatever else. Like that, you can't just look at SEO that way. And you can't just look at it, like most people look at it as like blogging, uh, a combination of keywords, and then, uh, like getting backlinks. Okay, those are probably the three three ways that when the people think SEO, they think blogging, keywords, backlinks. And a lot of people don't even think backlinks. I think people get confused. If you're confused by backlinks, comment. Let me know. I just think that would be. Uh, I I never I never want this to be something that's confusing. So if you say Jeff, what is that word that you just said? Then you should you should verbally say that. You should actually. Put that out there so I so I know. Um, okay, so going back to your, let's actually go back and look at some more of the keywords that are on your site and a little bit more about why you might not be ranking. You do have a title here, which is good. Um, again, like I said, luxury wedding photographer to me, in terms of bookings, um, to me it's like okay, like I've said this before, we rank. Oh yeah, let's switch over to my screen share, but so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, 
I just, I've ranked for things like, okay, like film wedding photographer. I've ranked for film wedding photographer before, and it just never got me, it really didn't get me any traffic, and it didn't really get me any bookings. So I was like, yeah, I'm done with that. I, we still rank on the first page for film wedding photographer, but like, I don't really try to. You know what I'm saying? And I actually took off some of the optimization that I had for that in order to make room for other stuff. So I'm just kind of driving that point home. Um, you know, you are using H1s and H3s, which is great. You don't have any H2s. H2s are important. I do recommend using them properly. So, you know, it's it's good that you don't have a million H1s. That's what I see really often is people having a million H1s. And that's just confusing to Google. Okay. Um, going to your keywords. Uh, you know, I see you harping, and I don't want to say harping in a bad way. Don't hear me saying harping in a bad way. I'm saying, actually, harping when it comes to SEO can be really good, okay? So when I say harping, I'm saying using it a lot. What I see a lot of people do is they don't use a specific keyword very often, okay? And the danger is that you sound like a robot. You don't want to sound like a robot. So, you know, um... That's why I think some people, either they just haven't approached it from an SEO standpoint at all, or they are like, uh, um, you know, I don't want to sound like a robot. If you know how to do copy, then you can sound like a human being and still use words multiple times. But, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, in terms of like a keyword, you know, the prominence here is pretty good. Density is really high. I usually recommend density to be something like maybe up to about 7%. The reason why your density is 20 is because you just don't have that much copy on your page. If you had more copy, it would bring that density down. Okay, so when I start seeing like these these high numbers, that tells me, yeah, you probably need to have more copy. And there's creative ways to do that. Again, can't get into all of it right now. I With my students that are doing the Easy SEO program, we do get into all that. We talk about specifics, give a very structured step-by-step -step method of achieving um, everything I'm talking about, really, right? Like, that's, uh, so if you do want to know, if anybody wants to know more about that stuff, let me know. Um, I, I've, and if you're not on, um, I don't know, a lot of people in the group are on the newsletter. So, like, when I first started this group, okay, and I promise we're going to get to more, more of the, uh, the critiques. Give me, like, two seconds here. When I first started the group, a lot of people um, did not, get added to the newsletter. Like I kind of added that thing in the questions later on for pe people that are joining. And a lot of people have joined that newsletter. So, you know, the newsletter contains a lot of good stuff. And um, so if you want in on that, you should let me know. I'm probably going to post a link to, um, like to a video that I did that to watch the video, you have to sign up for the newsletter, believe it or not. So I may post that in here at some point. Not right now. We're going to go a little bit deeper though. Um, into some more websites. I know, I think Alex, we've, uh, I think we've pretty much uh, covered everything for now that we're going to cover. So, um, Alex, thanks for being a good sport. Thanks for jumping in here, and I hope it was helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um, it looks like we've got, so we do have a question that I want to address real quick. Uh, Patricia says, can you talk about backlinks? Is that only possible being published or something different? So, uh, I don't want to go too deep into this, because, again, um, I know we're supposed to be doing the SEO critiques. That's what everybody's here for. So I'm going to touch base on it real quick and answer your question. Yes, it's possible to get backlinks without being published. Being published does get you backlinks. But, again, just because you get published and get a link does not mean that link will help you. There are certain links to look for. And, again, with, uh, with the Easy SEO program, it's all designed to make the most of your time so you don't waste time getting links. And I've seen people, again, I've seen people be like, oh, I'm going to blog this much. Oh, I'm going to get this many backlinks. And it's like, and, and I, some of those same people, it's like they just don't rank anywhere. You know, so it's like all that is just sort of this wasted effort when you could have been focused on things that really matter most and make made the most of your, your work. So, yes, you can get backlinks without being published, um, but being published also does not mean that you're necessarily going to get a useful backlink. So, uh, Mikhail, let me know because I see you. And I'll tell you what, we are, we are, if you'll stick around, we are going to get to you. Okay. I don't know how much longer I'm going to stay on here, but I think um, we've got like a couple others. And I'm going to do another test to see who is on currently. And so I know we had 
Uh, you know, next up in line was going to be, let me see, who was next in line? We had, I think it was Jennifer Sullivan, right? So, and I know Christina was going to be in here. We mentioned Otto, but I think Otto was not present. So why don't we, okay, Kevin's still here. Kevin, stick around. We will do our best to get to you. I know you were a little bit further down the list, I do believe. So keep sticking around. We're going to do as many as we can. I'm going to try to speed through these a little bit faster because I've gotten to get on my uh, my soapbox a number of times here. So let me know. Is the video and audio still working pretty well? If it's too quiet, if it's too loud, let me know. I can adjust it. Okay, so let me know if it's too quiet, too loud. Um, oh, Cynthia. Cynthia is here. Ah, cool, Cynthia. So I think I did not see that you were here earlier. So again, you know, if you're not here and I caught your name, then we're not going to do yours. Okay. We can go back. So I'm not making a rule that we can't go back. You know, if you pop in and say, Hey, I am here now. That's totally fine. Um, I'm going to be pretty flexible with that stuff because I do want to try to get to as many people as possible. And also, you know, if we start running out of time here, um, cause I do have another phone call I have to get on then we're going to do more of these, and I'm probably going to go based off the list that we already have. So, like, if we don't get to you today, then we'll we'll uh, we'll try to get back to you. Like, we'll try to get to you as soon as possible, okay? And like, in the next one that we do. So, let's go ahead and do, let's see, Jennifer is still here, and I think she was next in terms of the, uh, the list. So, let's go ahead and jump to Jennifer's website. Hold on a second while I, I, I copy it. And Lee, I see you. I see you, by the way. I'm glad to see you. Okay, everybody keep sticking with me. I'm getting ready to pull up. Jennifer's website. All right, here we are. Here's Jennifer's lovely website. I I am loving the color. Like the color scheme here is just gorgeous. Um, Good double exposure. Beautiful photos. Same thing I said before about other websites. You know, framing to me is really important. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit tough to tell, okay, well, what is your website is about? Okay. Believe it or not, Google does, uh, Google does have people that, that like human beings that look at websites and rate them based on how well they fit for keywords. So there is a, there is still a human element to Google ranking. So, you know, I think sometimes people just think in terms of, like, robots. Uh, you know, or there's a robot looking at your website. That's true. There are robots that are scanning your website. There are potentially, though, humans. There are humans that are looking uh, looking for, uh, yeah, looking at your SEO. I just saw Gabriel, and Gabriel mentioned that he sees, I think it's pronounced Vizcaya, which is, uh, that's, that's, is that Naples? I know of that venue because I know I've talked to uh, to someone else about it before. But anyhow, let's keep on going. So, you know, again, the framing here, there's not really any framing going on that directs somebody. So it's easy to assume, okay, people are going to like my photos and then they're going to push the contact button. That might be true. But you, again, you're making yourself compete on a photo level. Okay. There are ways that we must differentiate ourselves from both an SEO standpoint and also from just a business standpoint in order to thrive, right? So, like, and, and the thing is, you you, you have to you have to differentiate yourself differentiate yourself in your market. So, like, if you're in a destination market, you got to understand, okay, well, who are who are the other people in my market, and how can I differentiate myself from them? And then put that differentiation into my website in order to connect with ideal clients that I can serve better than anybody else. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, So, beautiful photos. I think you could be a lot more clear on who you are, what you do, and you don't have content on your page, really, in terms of, like, copy. And so, from an SEO standpoint, you're going to really, you will not rank for anything here. I would I would suggest. So there's a lot of ways that you can improve. Let's go ahead and take a look at your site and look at the spam score and all that good stuff. Let me close out a few windows. Also, I just realized I was talking about your website and um, <laughs> that I wasn't. We weren't looking at it together. Um, so 
let's uh, let's go back to Moz. Hopefully that was clear. If I wasn't clear because I wasn't showing you the website for a second, let me know. Uh, all right. So you have a really high domain authority. So like, uh, Jennifer, you're one of those people that I'm like, I know you could rank and probably make good money from ranking. Okay, because your domain authority is really good. My guess is you've probably been doing this a while and you've had your website for a while. And so it's really going to help you out because the domain authority of 31 is above average. But if you notice, like, your, your ranking, key, you have very few ranking keywords. Like 70, that is very low. Okay, so in my book, you have so much opportunity to rank if you just knew the right stuff to do. Okay, so... It, it almost pains me when I see websites that have some so much ability to rank and they're just not. And I, I know people I know many, many people that have this ability to rank and pro you could pro I don't know how many you could I would think you could probably at least add um, maybe tens of thousands of dollars to your revenue every year if you were using SEO. okay So you know again, these keywords these are just not going to be helpful keywords at all. So, and I'm not saying that to, to be mean or anything. I'm saying I really think you have a lot of opportunity, but a lot of what's going on here is a lack of um, SEO setup, <laughs> okay? And I, and I do think you could profit a lot from having your SEO properly set up. Um, let's, go, let's go back to um, your spam score. Take a look at that just to see. Unless and again, unless you've had some idea your SEO, I'm usually not too worried about it. Um, you know, it looks like you got a few sort of spammy websites, but these are it's it's not a big deal. I don't worry about it too much. Um, going back to tell you what, let's go ahead and look at your site in terms. And I can I can already tell you because I just know you don't have a lot of content on your site. So, you know, what I'm about to say is. Again, I hope helpful, but I don't want you to hear me being negative, right? I'm just looking at what I'm seeing and then sort of diagnosing it from there. Um, title, you know, this is not going to help you unless somebody's searching specifically for your business name. It's very non-distinct, okay? Uh, you don't really have any use of heading text, okay? So these are all things that your website is completely blank in terms of what Google's seeing, okay? So, again, you have huge opportunity when it comes to SEO, but you have to get things set up correctly, okay? So, any questions, let me know. Um, Jennifer, I saw where you said, I definitely know what I'm, I definitely know I'm doing something wrong in terms of SEO. Yeah, um, I don't want to say you're doing something wrong, but you are you are not doing what it's going to take to rank. And if you want to be serious about it, in terms of ranking, then uh, you really got to get serious about, okay, how am I going to properly do keyword research, then plug in the keywords into my site and create a good user experience. Again, it, you know, feel free to reach out to me if you want to talk more specifically. Um, I would love to be able to help. Right now, we're going to move on to the next person because I know we, we've, I, I would love to try to get to a number more people here, but I do have a, another phone call. Let me double check what time my phone call is here before, because I think I have one. Uh, yeah, so I've, we've probably got a, at least another good 30 minutes. So we're going to try to keep going through these as quick as possible. I think the next person was, let's double check because I know we mentioned. Yeah, Ke uh, Kevin. By the way, Kevin, stick around because you're you're pr you're probably going to come up here pretty soon. So if you're still in here, stick around. Um, Christina, I think was next. Christina, are you still in here? I see you. Uh, I see you commented. And Jennifer, you are more than welcome. Glad to be able to help. So um, let's see. Yeah. So Christina, Christina, if you're still in here, let me know. If Christina's not in here, and Mikhail is still in here, um, we're going to do Mikhail. If Mikhail's not still in here, then Cynthia, you will be up next. So, okay, Christina is still here, so we're going to go ahead and move on to Christina. 
Give me just a second. So I'm copying your email address and I'm going to paste it in here. And that's your email address, your website. Sometimes I say the wrong words. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's take a look. Beautiful website. Looks like maybe you're focusing most on newborn, right? Newborns, which this is, I love this. I love even their house, the way it's laid out and like the sofa and the pictures. That's pretty. I do like you have a, a good call to action, just like schedule a call now. That's good. Um, I think it's always good to have something in terms of like the desired, what you desire for them to do very quick off the bat. And it sort of, they keep running into. Okay. So like, you know, a contact form or that call to action. I, I, I think you've set this up pretty nicely in terms of having that, because this, this almost creates a, an instant frame everywhere because like, you know, you scroll down and it's like, you have to learn more. So that's a call to action in the schedule, schedule call. Now, the only thing I don't like about these when it scroll, like scrolls with you is that where you have other call to actions, you now have technically have two call to actions and, you know, studies have shown that you really should only have one call to action and in, in any given space. Okay. So I'm not telling you that you should change that if you wanted to do an experiment at some point in like, you know, maybe one month you, um, you take it off and compare it to how you did maybe last year, you know, being able to do those sort of split tests is nice. Um, I think there might even be, don't quote me on, on this, but I think there might be a type of plugin for some sites where you can create AB versions of your sites uh, or your website and then do tests on it, right? So you have one version of your site that rotates sort of with another version of your site, and then you can test out different things like that. Again, not saying you have to get into that to succeed. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I do try different things now and then just to kind of see, but I always like to compare numbers, Okay. And comparing numbers, understanding analytics, and then also just tracking stuff like that is really, really helpful. So this uh, schedule call now thing, I, I think it's great. The only potential downside is that it's going to conflict with when you have other call to actions. And I just think the more comfortable someone is and they always feel like there's only one next choice, the better. Okay, But this is definitely better than not having any call to actions, I would say. Okay, so um, in terms of a f like framing again, you know, you come to this frame and you've you've they've got the next step. I personally would probably not have this call a schedule call now thing, right? Because like schedule call schedule call like it's redundant here, and so now I've got three choices. My brain perceives three choices, but I've really only got two choices. And so two choices are already more than I would prefer, but, you know, I, I would say that we'd want to take the view of the gallery off, okay? Um, again, I'm okay with this. Like, I'm okay with uh, the schedule of call now and being in the same place with the view gallery. You might want to test it, but I would not want to have the schedule of call view gallery and then schedule a call up here too because that's just creating too much, and I think it confuses the mind, right? And what what's the old adage, a confused mind? Who can who can say it? Who can finish the sentence? A confused mind never buys. Okay, so doing a good job though. Generally speaking, in terms of uh, you know your framing, you always got something going on here. It looks like so you know investment. I, I would probably put like you know look at collections or look at investment. I don't know. I just like having it very clear. Like this, like do this. Okay, this is what you do. Um, let's take a look at your spam score and stuff like that now. Christina, let's take a look at your your uh, your spam score. All right, analyze. Just saw that Jonathan joined us. Jonathan, welcome. Glad that you're here with us. Let me know where you're watching from. All right, Christina. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. I was like, why is it taking so long to load? And then I just realized I'm in the wrong spot. <laughs> It's like it is just not showing me your your domain score, domain authority. All right, so you have a twelve, which is uh, I mean it's pretty good. Again, I see twelves on the first page of Google. Not a lot of linking domains, not a lot of links. 
you do have a decent amount of keywords. And I want to take a note here. Like, notice that Christina has almost as many keywords as, was it Jennifer? Right? And I'm not comparing you to be like, oh, look at, you know, look at this. Or, you know, I'm not trying to pitch you two against each other. I'm just saying you you can have a really high domain authority, but then not rank for anything. Right? So this is why I find, especially people that you've been in the market for a long time, you've been in the market for 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 plus years, and you're like, oh, I used to rank. I used to rank and get clients on Google, but then I just stopped. Well, a lot of that is not because your website can't still rank. It's just because Google's updated, and it's it's kind of con- like Google's kind of continued in the same path of updating. And you just have n- your website's just not optimized to rank, and so that's why it always like when I see people that could rank, you know, and they're not. I'm like, I I, I wish you would invest in your SEO a little bit because it could really matter in the long run, and you could get that that uh, that presence back. So I just see that a lot. I see people that are like, you know, I've been in the market for I've been doing weddings for ten plus years, and I used to rank, and now I'm not, and. Uh, you know, I'm seeing a lot of the other photographers that are getting business, and I would like to do the same. So, yeah, Gabriel. So Gabriel, yeah, I'm glad Gabriel said this. Gabriel commented and said, "I only have an eight domain authority." Yeah, and for those of you all that don't know, Gabriel is uh, he's in my my Easy SEO program, implementing the Easy SEO framework, and he's on the first page of Google, right? So he has a domain authority of eight. Okay, so his his website is does not have very much ranking power, but he's done the right things, and he ranks on the first page of Google for uh, for at least... We haven't really checked all your keywords yet, I don't think, but he, he does have a, at least uh, like two really solid keywords that he's ranking for, and so we're very, very happy about that. So Gabriel's a good example. Okay, let's go back to uh, Christina, your keywords here. Yeah, you know, press appraise. I'm pretty sure that's a nonsensical keyword. Lana May Spring Hope Photography. I don't know who that is, but you're ranking number 12 for that. Um, Hope Photography. Photography. You know, a lot of these, these are just not keywords that are going to help you, right? And again, that goes back to copy, getting some good copywriting skills. And copywriting is one of those things that, like, you have to be able to think in terms of, like, your ideal client and, like, what they might be searching for and then do the keyword research and then plug in those keywords, Okay. So that's kind of the the magic. That's the magic secret sauce. Um, before we keep on moving on, I did, Will had a question about any idea why Moss would say that there is no data at all on your page. Um, maybe because it could be something to do with if your website's really new, it may have not found data about your page yet, but that that still seems a little bit weird to me. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm not for sure on that one. You can maybe message me and we can chat about it a little bit. But Alyssa just joined us as well. Hello, Alyssa. So glad that you joined us. Glad to have you here with us while we do these critiques. Okay, so let's take a look again at Christina, um, just at how you've got your uh, your info inputted here. Um, you know, you do have a title, which is good. Lots of good ways to optimize your title, and it does matter. Not going to get into all the ways right now, but you know, if you like, if you don't have a title, you should, um, and your title should be nice and descriptive because Google's going to wonder what you're about, and it, and Google's going to look at your title. Uh, H1, it's good that you have it. You got too many here, really, in my estimation. That's not the end of the world. Um, it's it, you know, the, one of the big reasons that I tell people to have only one H1 is that often if you have more, you're not using them correctly. And the general advice is that you, you do have one H1 that clearly communicates to Google what you're about, where you are, all that good stuff, um, whatever your keywords need to be. But it's not the end of the world if you have a billion H1s, but usually if you have a billion H1s, you also have all the other problems, and it is best practices to only have one H1 per page. Okay, so you know having two here, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. And um, you do have some H2s, which is nice. Um, H3s, so, you know, not not horrible here, but definitely could be optimized big time. Uh, here's the keywords that you're ranking for. 
You got that Chicago newborn. Well, I don't. I, I say ranking for. I don't know if you're ranking for this. This is more so just what keywords we're finding with the use of the tool. So like your your Chicago newborn newborn photographer. That's nice because you do have a pretty decent prominence there, and you could have a higher prominence. Your density is really low on it. Like I said, I, I usually look for anywhere between three and seven. You know, so you could go higher in terms of density, but prominence is you know it's pretty good. Um. And I think that's kind of a keyword that you're looking at, too. So forward, you don't really have any sensical forward phrases. So, you know, your website's really not that optimized. So there's a lot of stuff that you could be doing that you're not. Um, you know, again, if I can help out more, let me know. But I hope this has been helpful and that you've learned a little bit as we've gone through this. So glad to be able to walk through it. Um, we're going to uh, remind me who are we talking about next? Uh, M- Mikhail, I think, is who we're going to look at, but I, I have not seen Mikhail. And if it's Michelle, let me know. It just it's spelled sort of like Mikhail in my mind, anyhow. So, you know, Michelle, Mikhail, let me know how to pronounce your name if you're here, and if you're still here, we'll 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 do yours. Also, um, who was it? We had another person that we were that was next in line. If not, um, I think it was. Hold on. We're going to find who is next. Bear with me just a second. Cynthia Boyle. Yeah, Cynthia, if you're still here, let me know. Okay? If not, then it looks like Kevin. I think Kevin is uh, next in line. Unless Otto's here. Uh, You know, if Otto's here, let me know. Christina, you're more than welcome. So glad to be able to help out. Uh, Let's see. So, Kevin, if you're here, let me know. If uh, Kevin's not here, we've got Casey Lostetter. Okay, so if Casey's here, you can let me know. Cynthia's here, so we're going to go on to Cynthia. Awesome. Glad you're here, Cynthia. Hold on just a second as I copy your website and pull it up here. Bear with me just a second. I'm going to close some of these excess windows, too, because we don't need so many windows open. Okay. All right, put in your website now. Lauren just joined. Hello, Lauren. Lauren Nickel. Hello, Lauren Nickel. Glad you're here for our live SEO website critiques. Beautiful website. Love it. Looks good. Um, nice that you know it's. I do know like what you are through your logo, which is nice. Still, not a lot of information. So you know, the more information about like who you are, what you do, all that kind of stuff is really, really nice. There's a lot we could go into there, but again, we don't have time to go into everything. Um, but it, you know, it's good that people know who you are, what you do. I do think again, I, I would like to see some framing going on here. Uh, I love that you introduce yourself. Got a picture of your smiling face. Can see the whites of your eyes. Those are really good things. Okay, if people can see the whites of your eyes and a smiling face, it instantly builds trust. Okay, so that's great. Um, I like your nice, you know, nice uh, type here. These are all good things, okay? So, good frame. You, you you do have a call to action. Almost like you could have that a little bit bigger or maybe introduce like a button right there. That could be really helpful, okay? But it's good. You've you've got like these call to actions. Very, very good. Cool. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Um I'm just kind of curious. Whoa, we're scrolling around too fast. I'm kind of curious Excuse me, I forgot the hiccups. Um, if you have like tried putting this video up higher anywhere, okay. If you have tried it, let me know like what the results were, or if you even track the results. Like if you have a video and you can track the results and you've had good results with having it higher, um, that could be a really interesting thing to experiment with. Because vi- video is nice because you can you can keep people on your site longer because they're entertained by a video. Okay, so definitely good uh, good good thing to consider. Let's go ahead and we'll plug you into uh, into here and check out your domain authority. There's so many. I see so many opportunities as I, as we're doing these website reviews. So many opportunities. You know, like my my sort of like my passion that I want people to have is um, I want people to be making the most, uh, out, like in making the most in terms of impact, right? And I and I think you can make impact in a lot of ways. Here I go on my soapbox again. When I do soapbox, I have to switch to, to full screen and get away from the <laughs> from the browser window. Um, I really love seeing people have the new opportunity of 
impacting the most amount of people in a way that you're like you're connecting with your ideal client and then serving them in the best way possible, right? It's like if you connect with your ideal clients, you're able to serve them in a way that nobody else is, right? And so I think we have that moral obligation to connect with our ideal clients because we and only we can serve them in the best way possible, right? And so there's a lot of ways to do this in terms of like um you know, if you're if you're a, a, like an educator, right? Like that's a whole new way you can do that. If you've created a digital product or if you're a blogger, there's so many ways to do that. But even in the context of booking, like trying to connect with your ideal clients in your market, like hitting, you know, like the first page of Google and now there being someone that like, like a new person on there that, that is, has a particular style, personality, that's you, like you can begin serving people like that. And if you're convinced that it's your moral obligation to be able to serve your clients because only you can serve them the way that you can, then you should, in my opinion, invest in SEO and do it correctly because there are people that would not book you otherwise that would only book you if you are ranking on the first page of Google because they're going to find somebody that way, right? Um, or they're not going to find anybody they like on the uh, you know on Google and then they're going to use the not, and maybe they'll find you there if you're on there, or they'll find somebody else, right? Okay, going back, a uh, we got an eight domain authority, which again, uh, Gabriel is an eight, and he ranks on the first page of Google. So, you know, 37 ranking keywords is great. Um, you know, we'll take a look at those in a second. Let's go ahead and take a look at your spam score. Yeah, super low. Looks good. Uh, okay, linking domains, you know, you got 10, 30 inbound links, and 37 ranking keywords. Let's take a look at your keywords that you're already ranking for. All right, so Kalamazoo, are you in Kalamazoo? Um, you know, so here's the thing about this keyword. I don't know if you're in Kalamazoo, and I don't really know anything about Kalamazoo. But this is saying the monthly volume is zero, right? So this is where having like doing keyword research could be very, very, very useful because, um, you know, there may be good traffic for similar keywords, but this is an instance where like if you rank for Kalamazoo wedding photographers, it, it may not really help you very much, you know? So being able to find a variation of that could be really, really, really helpful. Okay, so, but that's cool that you are ranking, you know, and again, I don't think you're making much, if any, dollar bills from this keyword, but it is still, it's still a good sign that you're ranking for that, believe it or not. So, you know, nothing here that I'm seeing that has very much traffic, and not that you need all the traffic, but it is nice when you have more traffic. It looks like you probably did a blog on Noble Presets, um, or you've got like a for photographer section, so you're ranking for that. Um, it, you, know, you know, if you do like blogging or you like doing uh, affiliate link type stuff for photographers type stuff, there's a lot of opportunity there. So there's probably all kinds of new opportunity for you there if that's something that you're interested in doing. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at your website in terms of keywords here. Kevin, you're next in line, man. So if you're if you're still here, let me know. We may do like one more person after this. We'll just have to see who's here. So, title. You do have a title. You're in Grand Rapids, it looks like. Um, no H1s. You do have an H3. So, you know, your title text can really be improved. Density. Take a look at it real quick. And notice, I'll, I've mentioned this a number of times, I skip over the one and two word keyword phrases because generally if you focus on three and four, you'll pretty much, like you'll have one and two word keyword phrases from those. So you were ranking, oh, actually let's sort it according to, uh, to uh, excuse me, prominence. So your highest prominent three word phrase is home about me, about me weddings, me weddings, anniversaries, right? So like nothing here is really going to be very good. Um, four word phrases, same thing, really. You know, so what you're missing big time is, is good, solid SEO-optimized copy and then having that plugged into the right place. You know, but your first big step is keyword research. 
You know, you got to have good keywords. You can't build out good SEO copy without having done keyword research. Because if you do copy, but you haven't done your keyword research, then you might rank, but you won't rank for something that converts to, to cash. Okay. So, you know, in your instance, it kind of needs to be keyword research, then, then copy. Okay. And being able to plug that into your website. Um, you know, but Cynthia, in, in, in terms of like your, the way your website is laid out, it's pretty good. You do have your call to actions and stuff. I, I would consider having this a little bit different to where it kind of directs someone to go take the next step. Uh, it can be kind of hard, I know, because of how the website, uh, you know, designer may lay it out. But maybe just think about that a little bit. Okay, cool. So let's let's see who else is here that's on the list. Because I've mentioned Kevin. I'm not getting a response from Kevin. So I know he was here, but maybe he's not now. So Otto's not here, I don't believe. Um, Casey, I haven't seen anything from Casey. Lee, are you still here, Lee? Lee, if you're still here, you're up next, my friend. Um, I know you were here, so comment. Let me know if you're still here. We've got Ashley. Um, Ashley Brown. I don't know if you're here, Ashley. Let's see who else. Oh, I need that thing to go away. Go away, thing. Uh, Alessandra. Alessandra's the last one on the list. So, Brittany M. Williams just joined. Hello, Brittany. So glad for you to join us. Let me know if y'all are here. Because we're, you know, if no one else is here that commented, um, oh, Lee, you are here. Son of a gun. We got you. Okay, Lee's up next. We're going to jump into to Lee. You just barely, barely caught it at the tail end there. <laughs> so hold on just a second as we get your website up. So glad you're here, Lee. Let's see. Waiting spy. Lee, I believe. Right? Yeah. Okay, hold on just a second. So we're going to switch over to the browser. All right. Mr. Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee Hickman. So this is great. Right out the gate, you've got this book, uh, book and info call today. You know, like I kind of, I wished on my laptop it looked like this. This is a really solid frame. When it looks like, um, when it looks like that, where you can't see the button, I, it's, it does not create as much of a sense of, okay, I know the next clear step because you have to scroll. But what happens when you scroll is it goes, like now you've got a split frame. So now we have the call to action and then a new frame, right? It's like going through a door, okay? We want people to feel like they're in the house and they know the next thing to do, right? So like, like imagine like if you go into a, um, a coffee shop and you're hit with like a million things to do, okay? Like, oh, order a sandwich or like order a coffee or this or that or this or that. And all of a sudden you have like a million different choices, okay? I, I know that's how our society has largely become, but from a, like a standpoint of like your website, you really want people to feel like they just are nurtured into the next step. And it, if you're like me at all, if anyone's like me, having too many choices can be really overwhelming, okay? And when people are already in an overwhelmed state and they're looking for a wedding photographer that's like a that's a big choice, you don't want them to feel overwhelmed, okay? You want them to feel like they just know the next step. So this is goodly. I just kind of wonder if, um, you know, maybe it's just my laptop, but if you could um, maybe shrink this down a little bit to where it's more like that versus like that, Okay. So that versus that, uh, and, and if it's, you know, if on desktop it's not like that, that's great, you know, but I, I would think for the majority of, um, of of just being able to reach the majority of platforms or, or what people are using, I'd maybe consider shrinking it down a little bit somehow or, you know, whatever whatever you can do from, from that standpoint. Um, this is great. Okay, you've got your, uh, you know, your about me, good, like whites the eyes. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I love this picture. So we're not we're not we're not getting there yet. I think like this is a good picture, but like you've got a good smile. Okay. I think I'd love to see a more pronounced smile. Okay. So like again, this is not bad. I just think you you we could get get a little like the first that first introduction because like you've got all these smiling, very happy pictures, right? 
And then we sort of have the more stoic black and white. So I'm not telling you that that's bad. You know, for you, maybe that's great. You know, and again, connecting with your ideal clients. But I think you kind of have this like happy, very joyful, candid thing going on. And then your photos like black and white and very much more stoic. Okay. So I would consider going with something more happy and with color in it. Um, I think this photo is, is fantastic. I think my, my daughter has just walked in. She's like, you've been in here too long. Let me double check on what she needs here. Are you okay, baby? Oh, no. Oh, really? Can you go ask Mommy about it? Do you want to cuddle? Daddy's got to get on here. Come here and cuddle. Okay, so Lee, coming back to you. <laughs> Thank you all for your patience. Um, I love this photo. I think this is great. Um, we're not going to get to that just yet, because I do want to, again, this is, this is fantastic to learn more about DC wedding photographer Lee Hickman. This is a very, very good thing to have here. That's your framing. So you've done the framing up here. You've done the framing here. And then we scroll down. We've got a new frame where, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very well lit, good, good uh, image of you in your studio um, with a quote. I think that's great. I think, you know, you could maybe have an, a frame here. Um, and I almost, like, I don't know. I almost wonder if you could sort of combine this section with this section because this is kind of like two of the same sort of things and generally what I like to have after an uh, an introduction is go straight into like a portfolio okay so you've kind of got that here I don't, I don't know about this you know um, I think you there's a way for you to compress this so they don't feel like they're scrolling through again it's kind of like the same thing and we've got two of the same thing you, your brain has to work to try to figure out okay what's the essential difference here Okay, so that's why I recommend having sort of like one introduction. And then, you know, like I just have to scroll so far before I get to the portfolio because, you know, we want to hook people up here with some of our best images. And then we want, once they're introduced, we want to get them right back to connecting those images with you. So I just think that the gallery, you know, the, the portfolio needs to be something that hits a lot sooner. Okay, so... That's kind of my perspective on that. I think this is great how you have the resources. I also would consider putting this up higher because, you know, you want to establish yourself very quickly as a resource. So the resource section, um, you know, it may, since you do have a resource section, I'd almost consider putting that up above the, uh, maybe even above the portfolio section. Um, the reason being is because you kind of have like a portfolio thing going on here with this, these uh, images that are that are flashing. Um, you do have a portfolio button, you know, so I want to find that. I would still keep the portfolio call to action, but I personally would really suggest having the um, the resources higher so they associate you with being an expert. So again, I, just to sum that up. I would consider doing something different in terms of this photo. It's a good photo, but I think it contrasts really starkly from the type of photos you have. So I think like something like this photo being combined with your about me um, and then having your resources directly below would be very useful in establishing yourself as an authority, okay? So, you know, again, for anybody that's joined in recently that wasn't here in the, like when we first started, we're not just doing website reviews, right? And we can't, like, like we are talking about SEO and doing an SEO critique, but the problem is, is that how long someone spends on your website directly affects SEO. We want them coming to your website, clicking around, all that kind of good stuff. So that's what we're talking about. We're creating, what we're doing is we're creating a lazy river through the use of framing, which utilizes call to action specifically and preferably one call to action per frame okay and there's a there's a rhyme and reason to this right and lee's done a great job where he's got okay here's this he's kind of got that portfolio image he you know he's got the intro but he could do it better i think i personally think you know lee's got he's got he's got an opportunity here to do it better um and he can he can utilize this resource section to bolster okay he's an authority and then direct people to your portfolio, right? And ideally, what I like to do is if they come in, you know, and, and I, I, I don't think it's 
essentially necessary to hit them with a, uh, you know, like galleries until they've learned more about you. You know, so like, you know, you talk about I'm Lee, you know, this, this section here, like learn more about DC wedding photographer. You don't want that there, right? Cause they're already learning more about you here. So being able to remove this from here and then maybe like talking about your philosophy and stuff and then directing them to your portfolio and or galleries. Okay, so again, I'm just giving you ideas on how to keep them moving throughout your website, but you don't necessarily like um, need to take off the gallery section on your first page. I just don't think that, or um, excuse me, the portfolio section. I don't think that needs to be removed from your first page. I just think you need to hit them w with the, um, you know, sort of gallery of, of select images here, then... You're the expert. Here you are introduced to you. They then go learn more about you. Then they go look at photos and are called to the to book you. Okay? Because that's that's they need to have that established in their mind. Like, okay, there this this okay, I like his photos. Oh, that's him. I like him. And oh, he's a, he's an authority because he has these resources. I'm gonna check him out. Oh, cool, philosophy. You know, this is what I do on my website. And I regularly have people when I'm when I because I I do phone calls with, with with couples. I just I'm a phone person. I hate having to communicate through email, generally speaking. And so I love getting on the phone and be able to talk with people that way. So, you know, for me, a lot of times I have couples that actually repeat stuff that they've read on my about me page. And when they start doing that, I'm like, they've read my website. They spent time on my website this is going to be so much easier to book them. And I know I want to book them because they've resonated with my branding and my copy, which is very specific. Okay. So, um, you know, I think, I think this is good, Lee. I just think you could do a whole lot more in terms of doing it better. So let's go ahead and take a look at your website. Um, as one person said one time, look under the skirt, um, or more appropriately, m under the hood. Okay. Well, that's probably the one I'm going to use. We're going to look under the hood. Uh, but I did have one time a person said, I feel like you're looking under the skirt of my website. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. Um, but okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we are looking at the internal, you know, the, the internal sort of like back end stuff a little bit more so than just the look of it. And we've done this before, I think. I think you may have done a website review before. So like, you know, I don't know if it's changed much yet, but you've got that 16, which is solid. Um, you know, not a lot of ranking keywords yet. Spam score, we'll take a look at that real quick. Okay, it's a two. So, again, a two is not bad, okay? I don't even know why it's a two, honestly, because you've got, like, no bad websites linking to you, really. Um, so, a two, I wouldn't worry about at all. I really don't start worrying about spam scores until it's, like, 15 20%. I sort of get concerned when it's, like, a five to ten, because most people just don't have any spam score or about a zero to two, maybe three percent. So that's not bad. I wouldn't worry about it at all. Um, your ranking keywords so far, and this is what, this is going to show you what Moz has crawled and found. Okay, so this may not be super up to date, because I know you've done a lot of updates recently, Lee, so like let's see. So yeah, so a lot of these that are showing up so far are you know, a lot of the luxury wedding photographer stuff, I just don't worry about that too much. So, you know, Moz has probably still not updated with your new keywords, but we can go and look at specific things here. All right. Title. Good. Got a good title. Um, could maybe be optimized a little bit more by putting some more information in there, but this is this is pretty good. Um, let's see. So H1, you got the one H1, fantastic. This is pretty good. Let's take a look at your density. Got lots of keywords. I like saying that. Okay, so your your DC wedding photographer here, good prominence. Density could probably go up a little bit. Um, you know, three percent is good though. I'm happy with three percent. And let's see what your most prominent keywords are. So wedding photographer Lee, photographer Lee Hickman, DC wedding photographer. Those are that's 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 pretty good. Um, four word. So 
you can definitely work on your four word keyword phrases. Okay. So, cause like the DC wedding photographer, Lee wedding photographer, Lee Hickman, you know, these are, these are not going to help too much. DC wedding photographer. I, I think, um, these are not going to help a lot. So I would say work on your four word phrases, incorporating that, incorporating that into your content would be a really, really good idea. So, um, okay. That's uh, that's about it right now for uh, for Lee. Lee, if you have more questions, you can let me know in the comments there. Um, let's see. Getting on the phone. Oh, Katie says, getting on the phone is a game changer. Yeah, so I agree with you, Katie. I think getting on the phone, it, it depending on the location, because I've heard some people be like, yeah, nobody, you know, nobody wants to get on the phone. So it really does go based off your clientele. Having a script, I, I developed a script for phone calls. Um, and you know, I, I used to be really, really uncomfortable on the phone talking to people, but with a script, like, and I'm not talking about just reading off a script and being like, you know, um, okay, ask this question like a robot. I'm, I'm talking about using a script as sort of like a, um, a guide. So you feel like you can, again, it's, it's just like with a website, like you want to guide people in this stream. Okay. So like. Phone calls should be the exact same thing. You know, you can be conversational, but generally speaking, like, people love feeling like they're known, connected with, cared for, and guided. That's what they want. So that's what I've based my script off of, um, and I I think it works really, really well, personally. So, um, okay, I think we may have had... We'll do one more pass. I, I have time for one more and then we're going to shut it down for today. So let's um, let's see who else we have in here. Uh oh, oh, Mikhail, you just joined right as I'm saying that. So you're here. Let me comment. If you comment, I will do your website. We'll do. A, 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 you were the first one to comment before. So you know if you're if you're still here, we're going to do yours. Um. So comment and let me know if you're actually here. Okay. It, it said you joined. So if you did actually join and you're still here and didn't just like jump in and then jump out, we are going to review your website. So comment, let me know. And I'm saying Mikhail. It could be Michelle. So Mikhail McCleary Crumley. Or Mikhail or Michelle, which way, whichever way it is. Comment, let me know if you're actually in here. If you're not, I think there was one other person um, from Absolute Imagery. Okay. Um, hi, Anya. Glad to see you in here, Inya. Um, do we have... Let's see. Do we have... Uh, who was it? Absolute Imagery or Mikhail? Let me know if either of you are still in here. If not, then we've got uh, you know Riley Payton, Katie Watkins. I think I actually saw you join in here. So, Katie, if you're still here, comment. Whoever comments is going to get the last one of the day. So... Let me know uh, who's here. You're going to get the last one. Whoever comments out of those people I mentioned, you're going to get the last one. So let's uh, let's see let's see who it's going to be. It's all up for grabs. One, surely one of y'all are here. It ha we have to have either okay, Katie Watkins. There we go. So Katie, you are um, you're you win. Congratulations. You you are. Uh, going to get your website reviewed and you're going to be the last one for today so hang on just a second as i copy and paste your website oh, it's so hard to copy and paste I'm like struggling to copy it here come on now there we go all right hold on as we switch over and start reviewing your website All right, here we go. Catherine Leanne, beautiful photos. Love that one of the bride and I think it was the bride and groom walking down through there. Um, looks good. I like your style. In terms of framing, uh, you know, right now we just don't know what your web, like your website actually is. You could be a florist or a wedding planner or just about anything. Right, so being able to be very, very specific is helpful, believe it or not. So that would be the first thing I'd say. Also, in terms of like creating a frame, uh, you know, there's nothing to kind of guide us to the next step. 
I, but I do like that you have your, your, you know, about me, sort of like many about me here. I got the all about Katie. I might sneeze, by the way. I feel it coming on. So don't be surprised if y'all see me sneeze. Um, I would, I would personally, you know, I mean, you know, your clients better than me, but I, when it's a call to action, I really like it to be a strong client. So like learn more, you know, about like versus the all about. So again, it's not a big deal either way. And there are ways that we can optimize all this in terms of SEO, but that gets more deeper into copy. So, you know, we're not going to do that right now, but I do like this. I like being able to see the whites of people's eyes. Um, you know, just a nice photo for someone to kind of get an introduction to. Um, you know, I don't think this is like for your style. It looks like you do a lot of black and whites. So, you know, like with Lee, I was like, you know, Lee, I think you should do a color image of yourself just because like the style of Lee's and then like, going into his photo, there's kind of like this like stark difference, right? With you though, in this instance, it looks like you're utilizing a lot of black and white and you have, um, I don't know, it's it's maybe a little bit more of a less uh, whimsical style, maybe I, I could say. I don't know if that's the right word. So I'm okay with this black and white image here. Um, you know, I would maybe try to get one where you look, I just think of people really connect with people when they look really happy and smiling. You don't look unhappy at all. I think you look like you're happy. Um, I think you could get a even more um, lively photo of yourself. I don't know you real well, and if that's just not you, then don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Like You have to do you because you know your ideal clients. You have to connect with them, but the goal that we're creating here is we're trying to get people drawn into your website so they spend more time there. Okay, so you, you've done a good job, though, making sure you have that call to action there. Um, I, you know, no call to action here. And this is a review section. If you got a review section, like, let them know. Like, um, you know, read more reviews here. Bam. Then they click. So that's framing, right? So, um, you know, I do like how you have this here. This is good to have. I don't know why an image isn't showing up there under, like, Tahoe Wedding. But there's not an image showing up for some reason. So th this is pretty good. There's definitely room for improvement on this, Katie. But, um, you know, not bad. And uh, we're going to look at your... Uh, Gonna take a look under the hood, so to speak. So give me a second as I input it here. All right. Give it a second to refresh. Got a domain authority of 19, so you definitely have a lot of good opportunity and power to rank right out the gate. Um, check your spam score. 1%, not bad. Oh, hold on, I saw some Dave Ramsey stuff. I swear I just saw a Dave Ramsey website. Did I not just see a Dave Ramsey website there? Do you got some affiliation with Dave Ramsey? Let me know, because I swear before it, like, unless it refreshed and that was actually not yours, but I'm pretty sure I saw a Dave Ramsey website. Um, I know who Dave Ramsey is. I don't follow Dave Ramsey completely, but I do listen to some of his stuff. He would hate me, probably, but that's another story. I do like Dave Ramsey's stuff, though. Okay, so anybody else listen to Dave Ramsey? Or is it just me? Um, ranking keywords, you got a lot of good ranking. I'm not good. I don't know if they're good yet because I haven't looked at them. But you do have a lot of ranking keywords, which is kind of a, a good sign. So if it will load, we're going to take a look at what they are. Oh, for a business boutique, you were featured there. So I did see the Dave Ramsey thing. That's kind of cool. Um... San Francisco film wedding photographer. Let me know if you get it. So here's here's a good example. Let me you're ranking apparently number two for that. Doesn't look like there's much monthly volume there, but let me know if you ever get any business by people finding you through that. Okay, I mentioned earlier that I didn't think those sorts of keywords were very helpful because your average person is not usually looking for a film wedding photographer. And, in, and even if they are, they're not searching for that. So, um, you know, my wife and I, we shoot film and we have advertised that way in the past. And, you know, we have, um, we have shot for people that care very much about film wedding photography, but I just think from a general marketing standpoint, when it comes to SEO, it's not usually very effective. So let me know if you've ever actually booked something off that, but I see you're welcome. You're ranking for like the San Francisco wedding film photographer. Um, you know, like again, 
well that that actually so like this is this is a really good example of why keyword research is so important okay so look at how much more traffic there is monthly for San Francisco wedding film photographer versus San Francisco film wedding photographer like do you see that there is and the no data generally means that it's like it could be very very low I generally find that because like I'll use um, you know another tool to kind of check okay how much traffic is there for a particular keyword um, in another tool, right? So I'm using another tool and I'll check the traffic and a lot of times it'll have, the other tool will have some traffic. Um, <laughs> so usually when it's no data, that's not a good sign. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say in so many words. So the 73 for that slight variation, that's why keyword research is so important because you might be having a keyword that if you make a small tweak, you'll have like, tons more traffic and i've seen like i've seen people have like seven seven hundred percent more traffic for one keyword than a very similar keyword okay so again that's why solid good keyword research best practices are always preferred okay so going down through here a little bit more i'm not seeing anything with much traffic coming through um you know you got like greetable review your oh you're a greetable partner that's cool so that's cool. If you do blogging and affiliate stuff, there's lots of good SEO opportunities for you, especially. Um, yeah, so let's see, 102, I don't know what Melvin Junko is. I don't know who that is. Is that a person that I should know? Let me know. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and go back over to your website, take a look at some of the, more of those, uh, more of those under the hood type things. Okay, so title, you know, to me, not very optimized. I don't think this is a very optimized title. No H1s, you know, um, so not necessarily, yeah, definitely not optimized in terms of your heading text. And I did see where you say it's your dog. That's funny. I guess you, you, you're well known for your dog. Were people searching for your dog? Did that actually have traffic? You must have a famous dog or something. Um, looking at your keyword prominence, let's go back up here. Um, fine art film, art film, San Francisco, or SF, I shouldn't say San Francisco, technically. Film, SF, wedding, the kinds of, yeah. So these are like pretty meaningless keywords, in my opinion. Same thing here, uh, you know, art film, SF wedding, fine art film, SF. So, you know, again, this is largely your, your issues here are like copy problems, um, copy and then like keyword research, right? So, you know, you do have a lot of opportunity. I'd love to see you ranking, you know? So again, so glad we got to go through your website and do a critique there. But, uh, you know, pretty much everybody that we looked at, like you have so, so much opportunity to rank. And I'm so glad that you're taking these next steps to be able to figure out like, okay, well, what can I do to my website? Is my website good? And I'm just not ranking. Um, you know, if you're, if you're not ranking, anywhere like and you're trying to figure it out that's fantastic you know because it means it shows that you're putting effort into your business and you're trying to look for ways to be able to connect with your ideal clients so kudos to everybody that participated if we, if you know if you're still in here and we didn't get around to your website uh we're gonna do more of these right so keep with it and um you know again if anybody wants to to reach out for more specialized help let me know. I do have a number of students that I kind of take on a on a case by case basis, and so um, I'll put like let's see, let me see if I've got the link. I'll put a link uh, to a video you can watch, and you know if you want to if you want to reach out and kind of look at getting some more specialized help, then that would be the sort of the way to go with that. So hold on a second. Um, let's see if I can find the link. Here it is. Yeah, so I'm going to put that. I think I could put this in the comments here. So bear with me just a second. Okay, yeah, here we go. Here's the link. It's coming, dropping in, dropping it like it's hot. So the link is there. You'll see that. Um, feel free to click on it, watch that. There is a contact form on the next page, so just be aware of it. So any other questions before we jump off, let me know. Um, it's, like I said, been a pleasure. I really consider it a privilege to be able to do this with you all, and um, if there's anything else I can do, let me know. Keep your eye out for when we do more of these.
And uh, y'all have a great rest of the day. Any other questions? Last chance. Last chance for any other questions. Last call. Bar is closing up. Okay? I don't see anything coming through yet, but I know there's a little bit of a delay on Facebook Live. So I'll give you like, on my side of things, I'll give you like 15 more seconds as I take another sip of tea. All right? Green tea. That's what I'm drinking. In case anyone was curious, I'm drinking green tea because I like green tea. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right. Thank you all so much for being here with me today. You all have a great rest of the day and a good week. And remember, participate in the group. If you got questions or anything or, like, you want to talk about some wins, we love hearing that stuff in the group. So be sure to be active. You know, the more active you are, the more stuff that you'll see, which is really, really good. Um, you know, so, like, what happens if, if you don't interact, then you don't see the stuff in the group as much, right? So if you're wanting to improve your SEO, you should be interacting with the stuff in the group. I will also say that link that I posted, if you if you click on that, then, um, you know, it's it, you'll have to enter in your email address, which is going to add you to the easiest. It's going to add you to the email list, right? So, like, for instance, if you're on the email list, then you get notifications about things like this, right? So if, if we're going to do more... Um, like website critiques or there's a new post or something like that. Um, you know, Facebook gets to determine that algorithm, right? So like you might not see the post, but if you're on the email list, then when there's new posts and new stuff coming up and all that kind of stuff, then you get those emails to your inbox. So you're more likely to see it. And um, so just consider joining that as well. And uh, that's it guys. You're welcome by the way, Katie. Thank you for your thank you. I appreciate that. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya.